Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin'. It's D. About to react to this vid by Publish X. This is the real Playboy Cardi story documentary. Okay, we're gonna see what this doc is like. Um, when is his new album coming out? I feel like people have been waiting for it for a minute now, but I don't know of any updates about it. Um, I know his fans are waiting. He has a really strong cult following. And I don't even know that, you know, that was the thing until I went to Rolling Loud in New York like a couple years ago. And I was looking around like, oh, this is serious. Like, they love him. Like, in an obsessive, a weird type of way. Um, but sure, we're going to see what this documentary is like. Maybe they will speak about the album or something. I don't know. Let's watch. That's the one of the hardest beats I've ever it's not based. Can it just be a true story? Why are we basing it on a true story? I don't know if this is copyright. I don't trust it. Let's just get into the story. Brother. Jordan Carter was born on September 13, 1996. He grew up in the suburbs of Riverdale in Atlanta, Georgia. Although he grew up in a suburb, Riverdale was known for his higher crime rates. Jordan grew up listening to artists like Michael Jackson, Prince, Young Jeezy, and his favorite rapper, Currency. When he was young, he would freestyle a lot. The first time his family actually heard him freestyle, they threw dollar bills on him as a joke and hyped him up to keep going. He never really thought anything of it growing up and would never actually write down a song. In high school, he got really involved with basketball, to the point where he believed if he really tried, he could go pro. He started smoking weed every day before practice, and his grades would be mediocre at best all through high school. He eventually got into a fight with his basketball coach and quit the team. His friends would tell him to start recording real music, since they thought he had what it took. After thinking about it, and now that his hoop dreams were done, he decided to start writing his first songs. He recorded his first song on GarageBand, entitled It Cry. He decided to go with the name Sir Cartier and he even shot a music video for the song. He would get into music pretty fast, to the point where he was skipping class just to write down songs. While in high school, he dropped his very first project, Young Misfit. You can still listen to it to this day on YouTube. He got his first jobs at a grocery store and later H&M, because he always had an interest like in fashion and clothes. But like fashion is just a way for me to express myself without speaking, you know? He would continue to make music for the rest of high school and even quit his job at H&M after feeling embarrassed that a customer asked if he made music and recognized him. He would barely graduate school after completing a ton of makeup homework in the last couple weeks. He was so close to not graduating that his family thought he wasn't and didn't even show up to watch him walk the stage. Knowing that he wasn't going to college, he decided to go harder with his music and created a SoundCloud under his new name, Playboy Cardi. One of his friends knew an Atlanta producer who he thought Cardi would work well with. The producer's name was Ethereal, and he was known for being very selective with who he works with. But because Cardi's friends spoke highly of him, they would meet in the studio. When Cardi got to the studio, he told Ethereal he wanted to hear unique beats, no trap beats. The two started to have good chemistry, and started working on music a lot. Ethereal would introduce Cardi to a guy named Father, who was the founder of the underground label, Awful Records. He dropped his very first song called Young Xanho on SoundCloud, and after Father heard this, he would sign Cardi to Awful Records as well. The moment I realized that it was people I did I like my music, you know, that pushed me. That was enough. Under his new label, which was just starting to gain a buzz around Atlanta, he dropped his songs Lost and Talk. Even this early on, you can hear how ahead of its time this music was. It was unlike all the music coming out of Atlanta in 2014. This is where he really started to find his style and run with it. In late 2014, he would make friends with another producer who was trying to make a name for himself, Mexico Dro. Mexico Dro and Cardi's music just seemed to work good together, almost too good, and once again, ahead of its time. When Cardi started using his beats, it was like he entered another mode. Mexico quickly became his go-to producer. They would record songs like Money Counter, Plug, and By Myself No Help. With Ethereal and Mexico Dro feeding Cardi beats, his music on SoundCloud was finally starting to catch the attention of a wider audience. His SoundCloud followers and plays started to rise. He could really see everything coming together, but was still very underground. In 2015, he decided to relocate from Atlanta to New York, where he would sleep on his weed plugs floor. I had to get up that the inspiration was to get from out of Atlanta. He could recall ASAP Bari coming to his plug's house to buy weed and recognizing him, not knowing at the time how influential this would be. With Cardi's music starting to buzz around, he would start to make a lot more friends in high places. And as I mentioned before, he always had a taste for fashion. This would lead him to making friends with Ian Connor in New York, who was a very popular online influencer and well-established in the fashion scene. Ian and Cardi would become especially close, to the point where Ian asked to manage Cardi. 
With this being said, he decided to part ways with his label Alpha Records. Ian would play a huge role in getting his music heard. He would frequently post Cardi's music to his hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and Twitter. Not only did this help Cardi accumulate new fans, but it would also get his music in front of other mainstream artists. At South by Southwest in 2015, Cardi and Ian would attend a house party where Ian introduced him to ASAP Rocky. Rocky told Cardi he had heard some of his music and really liked it. With the two already having a common interest in music and fashion, it wouldn't take long for them to become good friends. In April, he dropped his song Broke Boy and it instantly brought his face to the top of the underground music scene, gaining millions of plays on SoundCloud and YouTube, as well as blog exposure from sites like Complex. With millions of people now paying attention to him, it was only right he dropped another song. A month after Broke Boy came out, he released another single, Fetty, featuring Dash and Maxo Cream. Once again, the song was an underground hit. This momentum would lead him to officially signing to ASAP Mob in October of that year. Once he reached out to me, I was just crazy, bro. Like, what? With a ton of hype behind being ASAP Mob's newest member, Ian Connor announced on Twitter that the new Playboy Cardi tape was coming very soon. Unfortunately, the tape never came, and he would go through a long period of time after this where he really only dropped a few songs like What and V Lone Thug with Uno the Activist. He was featured on the ASAP Mob's Cozy Tapes, but no solo music was dropped, leaving his fans to listen to snippets and leaks to stay hyped for his music. This is also around the time he would link up with rising star Lil Uzi Vert. The two would drop their first track together titled Left Right, and instantly tie the fans into their dynamic duo. In September of 2016, ASAP Rocky announced to the world that Cardi had just signed a deal with Interscope Records, and also teased fans once again that his tape was coming soon. But no tape came. Hey. In 2017, the hype around Cardi's tape was at an all-time high, with some fans' patience running low. In multiple interviews, he stated that it was on the way, but producer problems caused delays. Just a few months into 2017, Cardi took a trip Cardi's down to Atlanta. To he was recording in a studio with rapper K Supreme, and he gave him a beat from an unknown Atlanta producer. The producer was Pierre Bourne, and Cardi would record his verse to Woke Up Like This and send it off to Lil Uzi for a feature. Okay. Initially, Pierre was upset because he liked to work with people face-to-face -face in the studio in case Supreme wasn't supposed to give that beat away. Mm -hmm. After getting a hold of Cardi, they talked about everything, and before they knew it, Cardi and Uzi were teasing the song on social media. About a month later, they would link up for the first time in person. When Cardi heard Pierre's beats, he started redoing his whole album, falling in love with these new songs. Yeah, yeah. It's like he was waiting to find a new producer who matched the way he was feeling at that time, and the music really showed that. This inspired him to drop two singles from his tape to give fans something to look forward to. Both songs featured Lil Uzi and were produced by Pierre. They were woke up like this and looking. These songs would be massive success and help introduce the world to Pierre Bourne as well. Like me and Pierre, especially, we, we used to sleep in the studio. In April of 2017, his life would change forever after dropping his self-titled tape, Playboy Cardi. The tape had six songs produced by Pierre and one by Mexico Dro. Magnolia would bring his name from the underground all the way to the mainstream, and it would turn out to be one of the biggest songs of the year, going two times platinum. This would earn him a spot on the XXL 2017 list. But shortly after, he would once again go through a long period of time with no I new music, besides being featured on the <laughs> ASAP Cozy Tapes be. again. With old fans and new fans highly anticipating new music, he would announce a collab tape with Lil Uzi Vert. Unfortunately, after multiple songs were leaked online, and after Uzi had to cancel his part of their tour, the tape simply never came. Wait, was that him who did that? When he like stopped the beat and did some weird rap? I think that was him. In 2018, Pierre Bourne would tweet that Cardi's debut album was officially complete, and he would drop Love Hurts featuring Travis Scott. Just a what month after X? Pierre tweeted that, Playboy no, Cardi dropped his debut it's... album, Die Lit, which debuted this time at number three and sold 64,000 his first week, giving Cardi yet another huge win. It wouldn't take long for him to take to social media once again to announce another album, Whole Lot of Red. As of 2020, Cardi has left his fans hanging on the edge of their seat, anticipating his second studio album. It's been over two years, leaving fans to once again rely on features and leaked songs to hold them over. On November 24th, 2020, he stated that the album was finished and turned into the label, leaving many to think the wait was finally over. Despite the fact that Cardi's music has been extremely scarce over the years, it goes to show just how impactful he has been in this generation of music. There are very few rappers who have a strong enough fan base to get away with simply not dropping music. Right. I think the reason for this is because Cardi will forever be known as someone who brought his own sound to hip-hop and inspired a whole generation of rappers behind him. But no matter how hard you try to clone a sound, there will only ever be one true person who can satisfy that craving, leaving fans willing to wait as long as it takes. Thank you for watching. If you this video is clearly old. Oh yeah, this video came out November of 2020. <laughs> um
Yeah, his album still hasn't been released like two and a half years later. Um, hmm, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, a lot of artists have a lot of issues with releasing their albums. They have producer issues, like, you know, he stated he had label issues. There are so many moving parts, and they have to deal with industry politics. It just seems like it complicates the whole process. So, yeah, we will see what happens. I will definitely listen to it, uh, for sure, because I became... I don't want to say I'm a fan. That's a bit of a reach. But I definitely uh, became interested in him after seeing him perform live, for sure. And he has a couple songs that I like. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to hear it whenever it drops, whenever that is. Y'all let me know what y'all think though. Let me know what the videos you've been watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!